Yep, we're going there, Aluxers. In this Sunday motivational video, we're looking at both the good and the bad of new money. If this is the first time you're hearing the term, well, here's the definition. New money is people who've recently become wealthy, typically through earned income rather than inheritance. By the end of this video, you'll have a pretty clear way to tell who's new money and who isn't. Let's get started. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. If you're not subscribed yet, you're missing out. Number one, your money is digital. It's not gold bars in a safe. It's not Renaissance art hanging on the walls. You most likely built a company. It IPO'd. You sold it or still use it as a cash cow. When the money hits your bank account, it's all digital. Sure, you have some other investments, but you can see the bulk of it by refreshing the screen on your phone. This gives you unparalleled access to your funds, which you can move at will. Number two, you made the money yourself. You're a self-made individual. You had to earn the wealth. Nobody handed it to you and you take pride in that. Only you and maybe a very close inner circle know how hard it was to get out and get that initial traction. Only you know the hungry, sleepless nights where your mind kept tinkering at building your ticket to freedom. Number three, you want people to know that you have money because it validates you in their eyes. When you earned it yourself, of course you want to flaunt it. You see it as the reward for all that hard work. This translates into everything you do. For example, you drive your own car. The car stands out. You buy the top floor penthouse because you don't want anybody to be above you. It's something in the back of your mind that keeps coming up. You're the driver of your destiny and you drove yourself to the top. Your ego is fragile because people have come at you before, but you're working on it. You won't lose your temper, but some people just rub you the wrong way. You also have a good nose for the snakes hiding in the grass. You know they want what you have. Number four, you got rich disrupting an industry. There was the old way of doing things, but you found a better way. You leveraged the tools of today and built yourself not only a better mousetrap, but a better way of doing business. It required fewer people, more software, and you leveraged the power of other people's ecosystems to get there. You're living in the modern world. You run your business from your laptop or your phone. You hire people that you've never met in person, and some of you only get to touch the product when you're designing it or running quality checks. Welcome to the new economy. Me. Number five, you're probably self-educated. They didn't teach in school what you're currently doing for a living. You got excited about the space and monitored it closely. At some point, you saw a window of opportunity and it clicked. You continue learning on your own even to this day. It's funny how now you're actually spending money to learn because you get to choose what information you need. Self-education is the thing that got you out. And if only others would listen, you'd share it with them. You look back at most of the people you went to high school with and they've all settled into mediocrity. For them, education stopped when they graduated, no matter if it's high school or university. One cannot break the cycle of poverty without learning what it takes to break the chains. Along the way, you discovered that almost all successful people are avid learners, so you made a habit of learning yourself. The most valuable thing to learn is learning how to learn. Once we mastered this skill, the entire game changed for us. We took everything we've learned along the way and put it into a course called Learning Mastery, which will once again be available for purchase this Black Friday weekend. So make sure you go to alux.com learn and get yourself on the waiting list. We'll let you know when the Black Friday sale starts. Number six, you think of yourself as the first in your lineage. New Money doesn't talk about parents. They usually had a shitty childhood. It's actually the one thing that motivated them to push this hard. Success was your way of escaping, wasn't it? If this idea connects to you in the same way it did for us, hit that like button so we know we're not alone. Your parents didn't have much. Your grandparents didn't have much. Nobody from where you are got as far as you have. You see yourself as the one link in the chain that changes the destiny of your lineage. You were not born in a family, but this changes with you.
Number seven, you had to prove some people wrong. Everybody looked down on you or worse. They ignored you. They laughed at your plans. They shut down your goals. They told you to give up and be whatever realistic means to them. Nobody chose you. Nobody picked you up and gave it to you. You did it all by yourself. And at that time, rest assured that they were watching. Nobody knows how much this meant to you and how hungry you are for success. Sure, they call you new money, but even old money started out as new. Number eight, you love media attention. You thrive in it. Here's the paradox. You're actually an introvert that deep down wishes to be a rock star. You enjoy watching yourself on the big screen. You enjoy seeing others marvel at your luminosity. It validates you. You understand just how impactful attention is and those who command it control the future. Number nine, you love risk. You wouldn't be where you are today if you'd played it safe. The type of leaps you had in your life don't happen linearly. You had to go exponential. You had to compound risk to connect dots in a way that resulted in the type of rewards you enjoy today. You love taking risk as long as the reward is worth it. A few weeks ago, we published a video called 15 Risks You Should Take in Life that you can check out by clicking in the top right corner. Everyone found it incredibly valuable, so we encourage you to watch it after this one. Number 10, you have specialized knowledge. Basically, you know your shit when it comes to the industry you're in. You're competing on a global level, so you had to become a master at your craft. You've got more than 10,000 hours put into it. Not only do you understand your business, you understand the model and where the industry is headed. This has allowed you to stay on top of the wave for a while now. You were able to adjust, adapt, or even reinvent yourself with the changes in the environment. As long as there's demand for your specialized knowledge, you will never starve. There will always be someone willing to pay you for what you know. It's an invaluable asset. In case of paradigm shifts, those who figure out how to best translate their specialized knowledge into the new medium are those who'll become kings and queens of the new space. Number 11, your circle is small and you're around people who came up with you. Nobody gets you. You don't have all that many friends. You lost a bunch of them along the way. It's not lonely at the top. It's you and the few people you brought with you. Actually, you prefer it this way. There are only a handful of people who can understand what you went through, who shared their own version of your struggle. The circle may be small, but the value is high. If you think there aren't that many people around you, well, good. A Ferrari has only two seats. A bus has 40. Choose your ride. Number 12. You look down on old money like they're unworthy of the unearned wealth. When you see people who grew up with a silver spoon in their mouth, you get this weird feeling. It's like an apex predator meeting a sheep. You sense weakness. You know deep down they don't have what it takes to compete. It bothers you. You had to claw your way to the top of the mountain while they were born there. You take solace in your strength. You know that you're able to survive a storm while they wouldn't. You and them are not the same, and you prefer it that way. Number 13. You think art, etiquette, and bougie behavior is pretentious. You understand it, but it's not your vibe. It feels outdated and smug. Rich people made it a priority for themselves to show how better they are than you. So they invented stupid rules and ways to eat just to laugh at those who don't know them. What a superficial way to exercise your position. You like high quality things, but they actually have to be good. If a meal is terribly expensive but doesn't taste good, new money would point it out, while old money would embrace and feed the narrative. What's the point of playing pretend when reality is so much better? Number 14. You don't care how much you spend because money isn't real and you can always make more. Everyone looks down on new money because of its spending habit. This is because the most common examples are uneducated celebrities. You see a sports star or rapper spend half a million dollars on a whip and some chains. You see them blowing through money faster than you can keep at it. This results in a continuous income problem. You need to keep working so the money doesn't stop coming in. New money is trending right now. They're in the game. They're everywhere. The demand is there for whatever they have to offer. For them, this demand will always be there until it isn't. This separates new money into two categories, visitors and residents. Visitors are the folks who get rich, spend it all on the experience of being rich and then get back to where they came from. Residents are made up of the new money that's here to stay. In the words of Jay-Z, fuck living rich and dying broke. 
Residents have their wealth cemented. They never spend earned income. They invest it and spend what their investments generate. Once you experience the distinction between these two types of thinking, there's no way you'll ever want to be a visitor ever again. Number 15. You don't think your children should have access to all your wealth. In all honesty, you wouldn't be here if everything was handed out to you. You'd simply find no reason to struggle as hard as you did or still do. All of these efforts are to make sure the next generation has even more options than you did. The goal is that your children have enough money to do anything they want, but not enough to not do anything at all. This is by far the most valuable thesis we found when it comes to a proper way to raise children. They'll get your name, they'll get the access, they'll get to the starting line, but they have to run the course themselves. Now before the end, we want to leave you with this. New money is the result of maximizing the impact of the present. Old money is the result of minimizing the impact of the future. If you want to survive, you need to understand what it takes to move from one side to the other. So we ask you, would you rather be new money or old money? We're curious to learn why in the comments. And considering the true Aluxers are still here, of course, we kept something only for you. Your bonus. The world will burn and we'll get a new world. Okay, here's what we mean by that. We're on the cusp of something incredibly big. Very much like a year has four seasons, history moves in four patterns. High. The most recent high began immediately after the Second World War, 1946, when America's economy began to boom. Everyone began building wealth. This period ended with the assassination of JFK in 63. It was followed by the awakening stage, the 1960s to 1980s. It's the time of the finding your individuality and your consciousness. Hippies and spirituality are indicators of the times. All that individualism brings with it societal change, leading us into the period of unraveling. Society changes how it functions. Sociopolitics are affected. People get divided and institutions are less and less trusted. It began in the 80s and we believe this period ended with a financial crash in 2008. The last turning and the one we believe we're in right now is called crisis. This is where society crumbles. Money loses its value. Greater societal sacrifice is required. You get mass illnesses like COVID was and still is and all the rules change. Crisis is a point in time of burning the present, keeping the things that survive the fire and building something new on top. We are halfway through our turning and it's expected to end sometime near 2030. Personally, we think blockchain and moving into decentralized stores of value will be a catalyst of the new society. Those who understand those patterns will come out ahead. Those who understand in which turning we currently are will be the survivors of the fire and those who will thrive in the new world because they're the ones who are going to build it. We learned about this from a book called The Fourth Turning by William Strauss and Neil Howe. If you go to alux.com slash free book and use a new email to sign up, you can get it as an audiobook for free. We'll leave a link to Amazon in the description as well. Get this book, Aluxers, and get ready. If you want to become new money, this might be the once in a lifetime opportunity you were looking for. If you don't want to miss out on the opportunity, write the word new in the comments. Newbies will think it stands for new money, but you'll know it stands for new world. Let's see who's going to meet us there.